sounds exactly like all your other beers. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Oboe Files. Today, we're coming at you from the kitchen because I am hungry for some oboe adjustment knowledge. No, we don't like that one. I should not have gotten rid of the writing staff. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about adjusting the oboe, which is a super important skill to know because a lot of times the oboe will just go out of adjustment and you can't be taken into the repair shop all the time. And these are adjustments that you're going to want to know for your daily life as an oboist. The oboe has a lot of machine and a lot of it is really balanced to itself in different uh, like areas of the instrument. So as a result, it goes out of adjustment super easily, which can be such an incredible pain. And you feel like you want to take it to a repair person all the time. But you can't be doing that. you got to just be able to live your life as an oboist. So today we're going to talk about the essential adjustments you should know. So you're going to need some tools to be able to adjust your instrument. The tools that I use are this Husky screwdriver. I think it's a 2 millimeter uh, flathead screwdriver. And mine comes in a little compartment in the back. So that's why I like this one. It also has a rotating um, back part, which fits in my hand really nicely. The other thing I use is this cigarette paper. The cigarette paper is OCB brand, and I use it for adjusting my oboe, but you can use it for whatever you want. I'm not your mom. The reason I like this brand is because it is not gummed. You can use any cigarette paper that is not gummed. If you have the gummed kind, it not only feels weird on your fingers, but it can get stuck inside the pads, which is not what we want. Once I have a sheet of cigarette paper, I'm going to tear off a little bit and hopefully go towards the corner and just get a thin strip on the end. So that the end is just, well, probably even this is too thick. I might even just tear that a little bit more so that I have a nice like pointer so I can test the seal of the different keys on the oboe. Once that's done, it's important to know what on your oboe does what. Now you can kind of tell by pressing different keys what they close and what secondary keys they affect. The oboe has a lot of this relationship happening all the time. So there's always gonna be a primary key and then a secondary key. In general, it's more important that the primary key close than the secondary key. I should say that they close with more strength. So we want everything to close, of course, but if you're having to choose between one or the other, the primary key is always the most important. So for example, the first adjustment that we're going to do is the B flat and C key adjustments. They open when I press the F sharp key. These are the two vents here, the top one being the C and the bottom one being the B flat. You see how they open as I press the F sharp key? If I press the A, this C vent closes as well. So the C would be the secondary key and the A would be the primary key. All right. Now that that's done, let's get into the actual practical follow along business of adjusting. Feel free to follow along. I'm not going to go at any specific pace, but if you need to pause the video so you can make the adjustment that pertains to your issue at the moment. We're going to talk about the top joint first and then some of the adjustments on the bottom joint. I'm only going to be talking about the main adjustments. I will not be talking about uh, very many of the fine detail adjustments that you may want to do for intonation although there are some that will affect the intonation. Okay, so the first adjustment that I do when I'm checking the oboe, and some people consider it part of their warm-up, and I might do it, as I said, maybe once or twice a week. So the first place that I check is the C and B flat adjustments. I will open the vents by pressing the F sharp key down here. I stick the cigarette paper underneath, and I just give it a pull once it's closed to see how tight it's pulling. I want to make sure that they are both the same because I have cork pads on my oboe. If I had skin pads on the oboe, which certain younger uh, model oboes have, so for students, or the Selmers, I think use skin pads, I would want the lower key, the B flat key, to be tighter. Right now, mine are the same. But if they were not, I would turn this screw here. So it is from the top, the one, two, third screw from the top. And it's on this like kind of vertical stack. I turn it to, sorry, turn it clockwise in order to tighten the C key. And I turn it counterclockwise in order to 
tighten the B flat key. The kind of way I remember this is I turn it toward the key that I want to loosen so that they are the same. So that it's important that these two keys be equal. The second key that I'll go to adjust will be the C key in relationship to the A key. So the first one was B flat and C in relationship to each other. And now we're talking about the C key in relationship to the A key. So I want to make sure that the A is closing when I press it. So I put the cigarette paper under the A, and I'll close the A and pull, and that feels plenty tight to me. Now, I will use my right hand and kind of hold it under my pinky with the thumb rest and press this F sharp key. And then I will close the A key with my pointer finger so I can test them. So I open by pressing the F sharp key and then close by pressing the A key. And that way I can feel that the C key is also plenty tight. It is grabbing the cigarette paper just fine. Now it is a little bit looser than the A key. So I might tighten that screw a little bit. And the screw to control this is the second one from, sorry, the third one from the top. Oh, did we miss one earlier? <laughs> I might've said the third one from the top from before, but it was actually the fourth one. This is the third one from the top. And if you're confused, just check out what is actually happening. So this screw, pushes on this lever, which is attached to the A. So as I press the A key, uh, this lever is pushed down, which in turn closes the C vent. So I need to tighten the C vent, so I'm just gonna tighten that screw a little bit. When I'm tightening a screw, I tighten it, ooh, just, that was way too much, just a little bit. And then I'll test it again with the cigarette paper until I finally test it by playing. So next we'll test it one more time, same as we talked about before. And I'll make sure the A is still closing, which it is. And I'll test the C is closing a lot now, so that's good. All right, when I'm testing to see if the A is closing, I'm just applying a little bit of pressure. The less pressure that you can apply with it still closing is the easier it will be to play to the instrument because you don't want to be squeezing the keys. I even think that might be a little bit too tight now, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that screw just a hair, and again, it's just like a few millimeters of turn is plenty. I'll test it one last time before play testing it. Okay. And then finally, between each of the stages, I like to make sure that the oboe is still working. So I'll play a little bit. And in this case, it's going to be really easy because we just want to make sure that the A works without pressing. Good, so A still works. Now, here is another testing technique that you can use, and it takes a lot of sensitivity from your fingers. So I don't teach this to my students usually, but for older players who are more sensitive and do have more fine technique, this might be a good thing to test to see what is going wrong. And what I will do is I will press the A and B keys with my first and third finger so my second finger can press the C vent and see if there's any play in there. Now remember that this only works if you're pressing the F sharp key down so we'll actually play a B flat. I don't hear any change of the sound so I definitely know that it's closing. If I wanted to be sure I could even loosen it a little bit and then I would loosen it until I do start to hear play and then tighten it from there. So if you don't have cigarette paper, that's a good kind of like cheat technique you can use on the go. The next key that we need to balance is the B flat and G. So again, we will hold the oboe kind of cattywampus and I'm going to press the F sharp key down to open the B flat key but this time I'm gonna be pressing the G. So this time I'm gonna hold it with my thumb under the thumb rest. I'm gonna be pressing the F sharp key with my pointer finger and pressing the G key with another finger, depending on how big your hand is. Does that work? That might not work as well. Actually, this works better. So I put my pinky under the thumb rest again, <laughs> put my thumb on the F sharp key, and then I'll press the G key with my pointer finger. So I'm testing the G and that closes plenty and then the B flat. And on my oboe, this one likes to get out of adjustment really easily, so I'm always kind of checking it. 
And these feel, well, the B-flat feels a little bit loose to me. So I'm going to be tightening, well, actually, I'll show you how to tighten it just in case. So this screw is the one that's beneath the B-flat and C adjustment. So that's actually from the, from the top. One, two, three, four, five from the top. And this one, if you turn it clockwise, will tighten the B-flat. If you turn it counterclockwise, it will loosen the B-flat. And again, it's all in relation to the G. If it's too tight, the G won't close all the way and you'll have issues in the bottom register. So I'm just going to, what did I say? <laughs> tighten it. Oh yeah, tighten it just a little bit to make sure the B-flat closes all the way. So I'm just gonna tighten it just barely. Oops. There we go. And again, I'll test it. And that feels good. And that feels good. Okay, so now again, I'll test it on the read. Okay, so the oboe is pretty well adjusted in the top register. If the top register is not adjusted, the bottom notes won't work. So that's a good like indicator. If you're not using the cigarette paper method, you can use the kind of like on the go method by playing the G with your first, second, and pinky fingers and then play your F sharp, and then you can use your ring finger to press that key, kind of feather it. And again, be really sensitive with the amount of pressure you're using, because if there's any play whatsoever, uh, you wanna be able to feel it. I don't hear any changes, so I can assume that it's closing all the way. The next, um, adjustment is the bridge between the top joint and the lower joint. Notice that there are these bridge keys on the side that allow you to play from the right hand to the left hand. The keys in question that interact are the A flat and the F sharp, and they are controlled by this screw here, which is like the favorite one of school instruments to not work for some reason. So I always feel like I'm adjusting this screw in particular. If it's too tight, the F sharp won't close. And if it's too loose, the A flat uh, will mess up the lower register. And I'll show you what I mean by disengaging it completely. So I'm just gonna loosen that screw quite a bit. So the screw's too loose. So the A flat now has nothing to block its action. So I'll play anything in the lower register. And because that is happening, any accidental play in the A flat will prevent the lower register from working. If I use the cigarette paper now, and I put it under that um, bridge key, it moves <laughs> with no resistance at all. So we don't have any pressure there. So I'm gonna tighten it until I feel some pressure. So now it's pulling quite a bit, but when I go to test the F sharp now, I feel that it's not pulling enough. So I like to leave it to where everything works without very much effort. So as long as I can play all the low notes, I'm happy. And as long as the F sharp still closes, I'm also happy. I'm just gonna loosen it a little bit more. I'll test the F sharp. And that's closing very well. And I'll test the bridge. And I can barely feel it sliding beneath. Let's test it. But do you hear as I play the C and feather the A flat key that there is a lot of change in pitch? And that means that the screw is not tight enough. So we'll just go ahead and tighten it a little bit more. And these are just little fractions. All good? I need to tighten it a little bit more. We're almost there. And I 
feel like that's a lot more stable and the F sharp definitely closes because we have the low notes. Okay, the next one that we're going to work on is the E to F sharp vent. And this is now getting to the low register. There are two uh, stacked screws here that are the, the most difficult, I think, when you first start out. So if you're feeling like these are hard, that's, that's correct. They are a little bit more challenging than the top register. But what they do is control the interaction between the E and F sharp vent, that's this key right here, and the D and F sharp vent. Okay. So we want most of these to uh, close with the same intensity. So first I will put the cigarette paper under the F sharp vent and close the E, and that pulls very healthily. And now I wanna make sure that the E is also closing. And that actually doesn't close as strongly, so that's a problem. If I have to favor one of them again, I favor the primary key. So in this case, the E. So in order to favor the E, I want to loosen this screw. Tightening the screw favors the secondary key and loosening it will favor the primary, which is the E. Again, like these are pretty sensitive, so I, I barely move the screw at all. That feels so good. That feels a lot better. All right, and then I'll test it. It feels great to me. So now we'll test the D in relationship to that F sharp vent. So I'll close the D. And again, I'm not pressing very hard at all. And the secondary key does close. It's not very tight, but for this adjustment, I think that's okay. And it's more important that the D closes all the way. The D does close. That screw is the second one from the top of this stack. And if I were to change anything, I think I would just tighten it just a hair. And of course, I want to make sure that it still works when I'm done. So just to make sure that I said that clearly, if I tighten that screw, it'll favor the F sharp vent and loosening it will favor the D. So they're in balance with each other. So the last one that I like to mess with down here is the resonance key. Now this one is a little tricky. So if you're having trouble with the low register, it's a good idea just to loosen it all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it so you can see what happens when it's not all the way closed. Oh, it's not loose enough, <laughs> it's still working. So the F sharp, sorry, the F resonance key is of course you can play forked F and have it be in tune. Notice it's at the same level as the E flat vent. And that's why uh, we don't play E flat when you play forked F anymore. In older method books, the forked F is written so that you have to use uh, E flat. Uh, I should say the E flat key. But with the F resonance key, that is no longer true. So if it's loosened, um, it will leak when I play these lower notes. And they just, they just don't work anymore. You can tell if it's too loose when you finger a D and then tap with your pinky that side key. If you hear the clicking, I'm gonna lose even more so you can hear it even better. You hear how it clicks? That's not good. That means that this is not sealing at all. And we wanna tighten it to where the clicking goes away. Good. When the clicking goes away, you want to check it with your cigarette paper and it should just barely pull, like barely at all. Now it's in balance with the same F sharp resonance key. So go ahead and check that as well and see if that's still closing. Feels good to me. And I lift the resonance key by pressing the D. And when I press the E, it should close as well. All right, so that feels a little bit too loose. And usually when the clicking goes away, you have to turn it like another hair for it to close all the way. Okay, last 
we haven't talked about any of these adjustments on the side of the resonance key, uh, but these will affect the pitch of your forked F. So tightening them will lower the pitch of the F and loosening them will raise the pitch of the forked F. So if you're having trouble with that forked F, not sounding quite right, this could be your issue. So, and both of them do affect that in slightly different ways. But again, that's maybe a task best left to the repair technician so you don't kind of mess up the balance there. Finally, there is the C adjustment, which will close the E, which acts as the octave vent for the high C sharp. So for this one, you want to make sure that when you press your C key, it closes all the way and that the E barely closes. Like mine barely tugs on the cigarette paper at all. If it's not tightened enough, the C sharp will not come out. And if it's too tight, nothing lower than C will come out. So uh, I'm not sure I want to <laughs> adjust mine because I have it just right. But if you tighten this screw, it will favor the C sharp and you might have trouble with the lower notes if it's too tight. And if you loosen the screw, it'll favor the lower notes, but it won't allow your C-sharp to come out. So just be careful with that one. The left-hand pinky keys is the next section. So we want to make sure that when we play left-hand E-flat, that we are allowed to cancel it out by playing any of the uh, lower right-hand notes, so C or C-sharp. And I test that by checking out the vent that opens when I play E flat. If I play a C and an E flat, I want that to, well, cancel. So I'll play E flat. And when I press C, it cancels. I also want to be able to play low C and wiggle the E flat and hear no change. If I do hear a change, it's probably because it's too loose. If the C stops working when I play E flat, it, it's also an issue. It, it might be too tight. And that adjustment is right here on top of that vent. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen it so you can feel or hear what it sounds like. So that, that's it's too loose. And so I'll tighten it. Oops. And it's better, but I still hear a wobble when I play that E flat. change so that's good and finally the C to C sharp uh, we want to do the same thing with the E flat and if that's not working the adjustment is almost the same but the C sharp adjustment is um, down here we finally want to check that same adjustment with C sharp to be natural I go from B natural to C sharp, uh, there should be no change in the sound, which there isn't in this case. But if there was, you would tighten it to uh, make sure that the C sharp stays closed. In general, it is easier to tell if something is out of adjustment if the screw is too loose rather than if it's too tight. So I always try to loosen the screw to see what's actually happening and then tighten it back in position versus just by default tightening it. It's just much harder to tell what's going on that way. Pause. That's the take here. Okay. And that, that's it. So we'll just do an outro. So hopefully, going through these main adjustment screws will allow you to fix small issues with your instrument. It can be very harrowing and nerve-wracking when you wake up and try to play robo and something doesn't work. Try to go through, in a really systemic way and a really scientific way, examining how the mechanism is actually put together so that you don't 
uselessly frustrate over the oboe when it's something that you could fix. Make sure that you do these adjustments delicately and slowly and just be really patient with the situation. There are things that can happen with the instrument that just need the hand and eyes of a really good technician. But there's also a lot that you can do as a player and that you should be able to do that allow you to play beautifully. If you haven't already and you found this useful, don't forget to subscribe below and hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget to share this with like band director friends, oboe students, or anyone who has ever had their hair torn out because they can't figure out how to fix their oboe. Thanks.